The internet went into an uproar after a certain Tumblr post came out that criticized a user over sealing bones from a cemetery and attempting to sell them over Facebook. This resulted in memes, debates, arrests, and even new legislation. Today's story all started when a call-out post was written on Tumblr. A call-out post on Tumblr? Which one, you may reasonably ask? Well, this one involved a self-proclaimed witch. This particular witch had been stealing bones from her local cemetery and using them in black magic spells and attempting to sell them to others to do the same. The witch went by the name of Ender Darling. Their real name was Devon Marie Machuka. Online, though, mainly on Tumblr, they went by the name of Little Fucking Monster. All one word. Devon first drew attention to themselves after posting to a Facebook group in December of 2015 for fellow witches, talking about a large number of bones being visible at, quote, a poor man's graveyard. This graveyard was Holt Cemetery, which was first built in the 1800s. Devon said, Most graveyards around here are full of above-ground graves because we live in a fishbowl. They clarified in the Facebook post, adding, but there happens to be a graveyard where it's all in-ground graves, for those of us who are too poor to afford an above-ground burial. The post made note that femurs, teeth, jaws, and skull caps tend to come to the surface after heavy rains. This is where I go to find my human bones for curse work and general spells that require bone. I find human bones are easier to work with for me rather than animal bone. I can relate and work with the energy they carry if that makes any sense, Devon said, adding, I know human bones aren't easy to come by, and I usually have leftovers. This particular cemetery wasn't exactly well-built or maintained. It's littered with broken headstones, crumbling blocks, muddy scum puddles, and more. Sometimes, when it rained harder than usual, small bones here and there would rise to the surface of the mud for all to see. Devon seems to have discovered this fact and used it to their advantage. All burials in Holt Cemetery are below ground, which is not ideal because of New Orleans being below sea level, said the director of Save Our Cemeteries, a nonprofit organization that aims to preserve the graveyards of New Orleans. Holt Cemetery is extremely crowded, with nearly 60,000 internments. Flooding is an issue in Holt and always has been. It is because of this that the bones would sometimes come to the surface. Devon spoke of using the bones in magical rituals, but also expressed interest in turning this little hobby into a business. Specifically expressing interest in selling the bones online to basically cover any shipping costs to wherever you happen to be, to any group members who may be interested. This group was called the Queer Witch Collective, and it was, just as the name states, a group for LGBT witches. Anyway, their own description of their group went as follows. We are a collective of queer witches diverse in age, nationality, gender, race, class, ability, and more. To strive for a better community for everyone, we must acknowledge how privileges and oppression intersect across these labels. Oddly enough, the initial responses to the post were pretty positive in nature. Several members of the group, even some of the moderators themselves, expressed interest in maybe buying some of the bones. Some did, however, express concerns that the shipping might not be legal, and to a lesser concern, ethical. Some responses, on the other hand, were as simple as, yes please. But soon, more spoke up to question whether this was morally okay by magical standards. Are you making any sort of offering or payment to the graveyard, to the dead, or the spirits of the land? Asked one person. I bring drink and honey and flowers, Devon responded, clarifying that they weren't actually digging for the bones, just taking what was plainly visible while strolling around. Me and my goddess have a pact, Devon added. She provides the bones if I only take what the earth gives and I leave offerings. It was around this time, though, that more members of the group started to criticize Devon, many harshly, starting with a reply stating, No, let them rest in peace. Devon waved this response away as members of the group came to their defense, including the mods. One mod even stated, I am really sad that someone is acting like this is grave desecration when it's literally taking what the earth washes up so they don't go to waste treatment? As more criticism started to flow in, Devon flew into the quintessential Tumblr-style rage, stating, Do. Not. Shame. Me. For. My. Work. Which was in reference to strict group guidelines that prevented members from shaming each other over their individual magical practices. It was one of the most important rules they had. 
the group specifically wanted to avoid negative responses to magical rituals that would be considered not okay by mainstream cultural standards. The rules were initially put in place to deal with the stigma against black magic prevalent in most societies. However, the group took the black in black magic to be a racially charged term and decided to ban white witches from using it in order to protect black witches. Apparently, that sort of opinion was pretty prevalent among witches of their age group at the time. In short, both labeling and shaming were very, very no-no in this group, and Devon attempted to use that to their advantage. On December 17th of 2015, a Tumblr user named Pastel Provoir uploaded a call-out post against Lil' Fuggin' Monster, lambasting them for stealing bones from a cemetery, bragging about it, and even attempting to sell them. Screenshots of the original Facebook post were used as evidence, which also identified the user as the person going by Ender Darling. Within just one week, the post gained oodles of views and over 36,000 notes. Devon responded on the same day on their own now-deleted blog, Fucking Heathen, clarifying that the bones were merely picked up off the ground and no graves were actually desecrated or disturbed. Devon called the critics racist, saying that the bones were going to be in, quote, a safe space for person of color witches. The claims of giving them a safe space completely clash with the intent to send them to random people online. Devon claims that they were supposedly saving the bones from being stolen by other people by keeping them safe themselves, but was in the end going to sell them to other people. It didn't really check out. Devon stated, basically, that the groundskeeping was subpar and that other people tended to break in and steal the human remains too, so it wasn't that bad. This wasn't exactly a lie. Adam Stevenson, the president of Save Our Cemeteries, did say that the theft of bones is a problem throughout many cemeteries in the area. However, that didn't mean that it was an okay thing to do by any means. In fact, it was becoming more and more of a problem. The fact of the matter is they are human remains. And there are laws against theft of automobiles and everything else. And there are laws against removing human remains from a cemetery. Whether it's in Holt, where it's a very simple little decoration, whether it's in St. Louis Number 2, where you have huge monuments, somebody went to some trouble to, to honor somebody's life. That very day, Devon's blog was also deactivated. This all blew up, and people started using the term Bongazi to refer to the whole incident. Many, many memes then began to spread about the whole thing. The post eventually spread enough to get the attention of the Louisiana Attorney General's office, who in turn launched an investigation to determine whether or not Devon had been trafficking human remains. While collecting Bongazi memes, one Tumblr user found out about the investigation and notified the internet that law enforcement was on the case. Within a day, news sites even picked up on the whole thing, publishing various opinions pretty much entirely negative about the whole debacle. Other users online fired back, saying that Devon was actually the racist one here. They noted the historical and sociological aspects of the graveyard, mainly that it was traditionally a poor black graveyard. This was Tumblr, so being accused of any sort of ism was basically a guaranteed death sentence, online life over. So Devon began to backtrack and say that the bones weren't actually from Holt Cemetery. One member of the group chimed in on this whole thing, saying, I joined this group about three weeks ago, and about ten seconds into that tenure, I see a post about someone collecting potentially black human bones. You are implementing white supremacist and colonialist tactics to do your bidding. Devon's accusations of racism had completely backfired and the whole QWC group fell into chaos. Devon soon quit the group of their own volition and the mods were left with a hefty cleanup job and a lot of damage control. A new account popped up on Tumblr, seemingly a new account created by Devon in order to save some face. This new account explained the whole incident in detail, saying that the whole thing actually saved the bones from destruction and gave them a good home, avoiding the name of the cemetery they were taken from. I just picked them up and went through the graveyard and picked up ones I saw on my path, knowing that they were either going to be crushed or swept away, the post said. And I'm sorry, but for me, a spiritual person who works with death, seeing a fucking machine tear into graves, uh no, this is probably referring to shovels, mowers, and maintenance devices, like that seemed a lot less respectful to the dead that you were also concerned about than me picking them up and saving them. I'm from New Orleans too, and I live there too. I have family members buried in that graveyard too. 
so y'all can stop treating me like some tourists that just came out of nowhere is what you can do. Despite the struggle to justify the whole ordeal, it is, in fact, a felony in Louisiana. Investigators located Devon's home and monitored it for several days before deciding to perform a search. On January 28th of 2016, the police conducted a raid of the home and performed their search, when they found at least 11 bones and four teeth inside of what appeared to be a fishbowl. Later on, a news agency called the New Orleans Advocate actually conducted an interview with Devon. In the interview, Devon said, They were coming in seriously expecting to find bodies and human organs and have me and my roommates arrested for black marketing human remains. You should have seen their faces when they walked into the house and found a bunch of sleeping hippies. Devon asserted that the authorities were completely overreacting by performing this search, stating that they even took a phone and a laptop as well, you know, as well as heavily questioning them and all of the roommates about the online activity, you know, especially the offer to ship the bones. Devon, however, continued to insist that this entire raid was a complete waste of time. But the authorities cited several state statutes that Devon had likely violated, including a law that specifically forbids the removal of a dead body of a human being or any part thereof from a cemetery space. Speaking of the bones, Devon added, I had them on an altar. It was just a bunch of little shards of bones and pieces of teeth I had picked up off the ground. I said to the agents, here you go, there's probably human bones in there, but I know better than to give you that answer. At the time, it wasn't really clear whether Devon or anyone else in the home was going to be charged with anything. At first, they merely received summons for a marijuana possession. Later, Devon fled the area and moved to Florida, which seems to be a trend on this channel, oddly, citing the harassment following the whole incident as reason. Being regularly called out for being a grave robber wasn't fun and was kind of scary. Investigators were able to subpoena all of Devon's Facebook communications, which ended up being 12,000 pages of correspondence in total. The post did clarify that Devon had been stealing the bones for months, at least since back in November, with a roommate. Two of the other roommates stated publicly that they had nothing to do with the entire ordeal. They just lived with the bones and were cool with it, I guess? Eek. Devon admitted to mailing some of the bones, but justified it by saying they weren't sold, they were given away. Any of the money they received, they said, was only to pay for the shipping cost involved and nothing more. If that was true, the punishment may actually have been more lenient, as selling the bones was an additional crime in itself. For quite a while after, people online continued to argue whether the bone collecting should be protected as an act of religious freedom, or whether the whole thing was just a stupid crime perpetrated by an edgy 20-something for online clout. A few months later, in July, Devon was arrested out in Florida after an analysis of the bones proved positive that they were human. While in jail, Devon was reported to have been performing some kind of magical ritual in order to remove a curse upon themselves. It's unknown whether or not this did anything to help. Devon slowly lost that defiant edge in jail, appearing in court all decked out in jail scrubs and shackles looking to be very defeated. Devon ended up going on to plead guilty to simple burglary and marijuana possession and fully admitted to the removal of human bones from Holt Cemetery, despite having denied it having been the cemetery before. Are you pleading guilty to the burglary of Holt Cemetery because you are in fact guilty of that charge? The judge asked. Yes, ma'am, Devon said. The judge handed down a five-year suspended sentence on the burglary count and a 15-day sentence for marijuana possession with credit for time served. Meaning, the little fucking monster was all free to go on the condition that no further crimes were committed. Unfortunately, the bones were in very poor condition and they were never able to be matched to any individual in the end. This case, though, did bring to light the growing problem of grave robbing within the area. Lawmakers went on to publish the Louisiana Human Remains Control and Protection Act. They argued that the previous laws were nowhere near effective at preventing the whole problem in the first place, and that something had to be done. Luckily, it was. Once again, thank you for watching this video. I've been wanting to cover this case for a while, but honestly, it's just, it's infuriating to me. I, this is one of the only cases that has legitimately made me angry while researching it in quite a while. But if you found the video interesting, please give it a like. It helps me out in the algorithm. Comment if you have something to say and subscribe if you want to see more weird dumb stuff. If you want, go ahead and follow me on social media. I mean, if anything were to ever happen to this channel, that would probably be the only way you'd ever hear about it. And if you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I always keep linked down in the description below. Speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got Lisa Helmbrecht, 
in Palato, Stephen Jamie Kramer, Max Swordguy, L, Rain Noir, Pao Yang, Alice Malice Tinnacles, April Diamond, Astral, Grack, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sass Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Adrian Lawley, Marsh, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Main, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all very, very, very good to me. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you, and good night.